More on tourist levies in Bali. The tourist levies, of course, the tourist tax. A lot of news on that. And RI, Republic of Indonesia, is not yet free to grant free visit visas. Why not? Stay tuned for details. Welcome to, welcome to the latest news from Bali and Indonesia. This is March 2nd, 2024. And my name is Bruce Slamet Siang. And what is the weather like today? Well, it is a sizzling 32.9 degrees Celsius here in Kampung Bugis. Humidity 65%. Wind speed is a calm 4.5 kilometers per hour. And we had a monster storm last night. We had a wind spout or whatever, water spout, sprout, spout, uh, right off the shore here. And wow, we have water everywhere. My room downstairs, my wife's house, this house, I mean, it was a mess. We're still cleaning up from that. And so <sighs> we need the rain, but I'm looking forward to the dry season. And a lot of stuff going on, and, well, I've been a little tired from all the pills I'm taking for high blood pressure and some nerve damage and some other things, and, well, these make me sleepy, so I haven't been doing much except laying around and reading. Other things going on, uh, there are war weather alerts from the government about high waves and choppy seas, so... If you are planning on doing some water activities, make sure that they're safe. And more chatter about the North Bali Airport. And well, a lot of people who haven't been here for a while think that because the new team, the president and vice president, well, assuming that they get officially certified this month, that they're in favor of it, and that means it's going to happen. We've had the governors in favor of it, presidents in favor of it, and it has not happened. This has been going on for God knows how long, at least 20 years. And so I don't really see it happening here. Too many changes would have to be made in terms of infrastructure roads, for one thing. The roads here are really narrow. And people want to go down south. So how many people are really going to want to come up here? Lovina area, this north of Lovina, Pamutaran. Uh, if you go over to the west, you've got Tejakula and uh, Bukit and Arsani. They're in Singaraja City, where I live, but they're kind of, well, they attract certain types of people, people who are not into huge parties and massive discos and mega thousand beach clubs and well send some older people and Europeans and it's just a different scene up here and so are we going to get tons of tourists flying in here if they fly in here and this was an issue originally no well not originally but in the uh, I think the 1997 1998 when it was being talked about one of the times it was being talked about People from Australia said, I don't want to go to Lavina. I want to go hang out in Kuda. I don't want to hang out in Legian. If my plane comes up to the north, that means I've got to drive all the way down south. Extra expense, extra time. So a lot of work would have to go into making an international airport here, and I just don't see it happening. But some people do, and well. And other things going on. But let's get into the tourist tax or the tourist levy and what is going on there. Because from what I've seen in social media, some people are paying online, but some people are having a hard time getting in to the website. It doesn't work all the time or into the app. Other people, once they get in, they can't put in the details that they need. And so the government said, OK, uh, it's a problem. You can pay here at the airport. Okay, so you could pay at the airport, but nobody's being forced to pay at the airport. And so some people are paying and some people aren't paying. And that's interesting considering that 
the government has had how many months, six months or so to plan all this out. I'm not surprised or I am surprised. I don't know. What should I say about this? That the thing is not working right yet. So let's take a look at this. Foreign tourist levy vouchers will be checked at DTW. DTW are tourist sites. Checking levy vouchers, proof of payment for foreign tourists will not only be checked through Bali's entry points, such as the airport and several seaports, however, in accordance with applicable regulations and regional regulations, checks will also be carried out at tourist attractions, those are DTW in Bali. Again, back to social media, people are saying nobody is checking. They're just going through. Nobody's asking them if they paid. Nobody's asking them, but they haven't paid organization. So this was conveyed by the head of the Bali Provincial Tourism Office, Pak Pamayun. He said that checking vouchers would be carried out after the tourist levy program had been running for three months. Checks at DTW will be carried out regularly starting in May 2024, at least once a week simultaneously in several tourist sites. He said, we will carry out regular monitoring as a form of enforcing existing regulations to check whether tourists have paid or not. Wouldn't it be easier to check at the airport? For those who have paid, they will be allowed to enjoy their tour comfortably. And for those who haven't, they will be directed to make payment at the location. And what about leakage there? With his field checking activity, Bagbagus appeal to all foreign tourists to come to Bali to make payments early from their home countries, if you can access the website and get it to work, namely through the loveBali.baliprov.go.id website so that their tourism activities are not disrupted by payment of fees in Bali. Pak Pamayun also asked travel agents who handle foreign tourists to always encourage their tourists to prepare payment vouchers while in Bali, because at any time there will be random checks from the Bali Tourism South Pole PP at DTW or at other places. Are they going to come down and check in people at the beach? Hey, have you paid yet? Tour guides are also expected to be able to provide clear information regarding these fees to guided tourists and facilitate tourists in making payment of fees. So they're going to spread out the responsibility rather than just doing it at the airport or through the app. Now they're going to get other people involved in having to check and if people have paid and then getting them to pay if they haven't. The head of the tourism service, chairman of GIPI, Tourism Industry, Indonesian Tourism Industry Association, said that he agreed with this levy voucher, checking the levy vouchers at the DTW. Pak Gus Agung, a Sanur tourism figure, also suggested that checks should be carried out at accommodation before tourists check out and at the international departure terminal. So, a lot of checks going on. This sounds like it is going to be a bit of a hassle to people. Let's say, for instance, that you pay, that you use the app and you pay and you get into Bali and nobody checks. You've got some proof. Okay. But then you're going to be questioned at the tourism attraction, maybe, or at your hotel, or when you get to the airport and you're leaving and there's going to be one more thing you're going to have to show. Who are you going to show it to? Are you going to show it to the airline when you check in? And if you don't, what are they going to do? Are they going to send you off somewhere to pay for it? Chairman of ACITA said that he also approved of checking levy vouchers for foreign tourists at DTW places. However, he suggested that during the three months before carrying out checks in the field, internal improvements must be made, such as improving the payment system. Yeah increasing outreach, increasing information regarding tourist fees at the airport, and preparing adequate resources. He concluded, so that when checking, everything will run smoothly. And what about transparency and what's happening with all this money? Foreign tourist levy in Bali, technical usage, still a question. Since February 14, 2024, every foreign tourist visiting Bali is required to pay 150,000 rupees per person. This policy has received various responses ranging from pros to cons. Member of the Karanasam DPRD, who's known as Gus Wawan, supports this breakthrough for the benefit of Bali. He said $10 for foreign tourists means nothing as long as they get what they want. However, he also admitted that he's heard complaints from hotels regarding the additional burden on tourists. Therefore, he emphasized the importance of clear rules for organizing the management 
of these levies so that the objectives can be achieved effectively. Pak Wawan explained that the main aim of this levy is to improve the quality of Bali tourism, both in terms of services, destinations, and infrastructure. However, he questioned how the funds would be distributed. Will it be distributed to districts, cities, or will it be managed directly by the province and directly tar to targeted in destinations, blah, blah, blah. He also emphasized the need for clear rules to organize the management of these levies so that the objectives can be achieved and avoid jealousy between districts. He said some get bigger, some get smaller, which is a problem. We can't see all districts getting the same because tourism conditions are different. Definitely, you look at down south, huge tourism place. You look up here north, we've got less. He added that a gubernatorial regulation regarding the use of levy funds must also be made immediately. Will the money be used in this budget year or what? This means regulations are not yet complete. Although there are still several questions, Pak Wawan is optimistic that the levy will be beneficial for Bali, especially if it is focused on developing tourist villages. He said, this is our target. We want to have direct contact with the community so that there's additional income. He believes that by focusing on tourist villages, strengthening customs and culture in Bali will become better, and Karan Lassam will be known as the spirit of Bali. Okay. Previously, the head of Bali Tourism Service, Pak Pamayun, explained that the levy was based on law number no. 5, 2017, concerning the advancement of culture and other regulations. Pak Pamayan said there are three purposes for implementing the levy on foreign tourists. Protection of the customs, traditions, art, and culture, and local wisdom of the Balinese people. Restoration and maintenance of culture and the natural environment, which is a tourist attraction. And finally, improving the quality of services and organizing Bali tourism. The levies for foreign tourists will be used to protect and advance Balinese culture, including customs, traditions, art and culture, and local wisdom, with the main priority being cultural maintenance. I thought it was going to be used for cleaning up the island. He said, then we have to protect Bali's natural environment so it's clean and beautiful and sustainable in a comprehensive and sustainable manner, while the main priority will become handling the waste. So there's a lot of stuff they want to do with this money. Well... If they get all this money, if they get that organized, and then there's the issue of transparency, of course, as discussed here. It's hoped that levies on foreign tourists in Bali will bring benefits for preserving the natural environment and the culture and improving quality of services and the implementation of them in Bali. However, there needs to be clear and transparent rules regarding the management and utilization of these levy funds in order to achieve the expected goal. And what about those free visit visas, right? There was talk about that. That was going on, what, the end of last year? And here we are now in March and still none. RI is not yet free to grant free visit visas. The Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy revealed the reason why Indonesia lost in terms of the number of visits from other countries. Why, why are we getting less people in other countries? Pak San Diego Uno said the reason Indonesia is losing the number of foreign tourist arrivals to Thailand and Vietnam is because those countries have visa-free visits. He said, we see countries such as Vietnam, Thailand, and Malaysia struggling in terms of waiving visit visas. India now has waived visit visas for our people. According to Pak San Diego, currently Indonesia cannot provide the freedom to waive visit visas for foreign tourists because it still uses the principle of reciprocity. He said, while our principle is reciprocity, until now we have not provided reciprocity because it's still in study, which we submitted more than three months ago, right? Pak San Diego said another reason why Indonesia is losing in terms of foreign tourist visits is the limitations of interconnectivity. He said that his party had predicted this from the start because Indonesia's interconnectivity has reached 80% without any additional flights or seat availability. He said, we need more flights and more seats. According to him, even though Indonesia has limitations in their connectivity and visa exemptions, the cumulative number of foreign tourist arrivals in Indonesia is still quite good, namely 11.7 million. Pak San Diego said Indonesia must be careful in implementing a policy because currently foreign tourist arrivals in Thailand and Vietnam are already above Indonesia. Okay, and so we're in the Galungan Kuningan 
period, right? And what is coming up March 11th is Nippy. What about Nippy? FKUB prohibits selling Nippy tour packages. What is FKUB? Forum for Religious Harmony. And that forum in Karangasam held a meeting with the agenda of drafting a joint call for Nippy celebrations, among them prohibiting tour packages and business promotions with branding on the holy day of Nippy. FKUB also agreed to stop radio and television broadcast and turn off cellular data at all service providers during the Nyepi celebrations on Monday. The activity will be stopped from Monday at 6 a.m. until Tuesday at 6 a.m. Wita time. Apart from agreeing to turn off radio and television broadcast and turn off cellular networks, cellular service providers, and IPTV, Internet Protocol Television, or digital television, everything has to be turned off, they said. The meeting also decided to prohibit the public from going outside, well, that's always happening, not to light firecrackers, use loudspeakers, make sounds, turn on lights, because Nyepi holiday, you observe the don't light fires and not doing anything and not traveling and not having fun, right? You're supposed to be meditating that day quietly. For Hindus, he said, it's mandatory to carry out the Malasti ceremony before the peak of Nyepi. He said, we've agreed to prohibit tours managers from holding tour packages with the branding of Nyepi. This is Nyepi. It must be silent. So we know the airport's going to be closed. What about the harbor as well? The head of the harbor master's office in Padangbai said... He has not received a circular yet regarding the closure of crossings from Parambai to uh, harbor in Lombok during Nyepi. He said the circular from the Land Transportation Management Center regarding port closures has not yet been issued, but I'm sure that it will soon if it hasn't been already. So far, there have been 25 ferries serving passengers from Parambai to Salamat Harbor, or vice versa. So the usual Nepi prohibitions, right? Don't go outside. If you're gonna have lights, put curtains up, no loud music, or no music at all, uh, no running around. Ogo Ogo parades, right, will be on the 10th. And so that's a Sunday. So you might wanna see that wherever you are. Always interesting and the kids love them. And so I think I'll take my grandkids there if they're going to be here for Nippy. And some more tourism news. Climbing Mount Agun closed for 29 days. If you're desperate to climb, this is the reward. Okay, wow, that's a weird title. Okay, so Mount Agung is going to be closed for climbing for 29 days due to having ceremonies. And this will start from March 17th and continue on till April 14th. The closing is related to ceremonies taking place at Pura Agung Basaki. The Basaki traditional village head said that closing of Mount Agung was carried out to expedite the ceremonies from start to finish. And most importantly, he said, to maintain the sanctity of Pura Agung Basaki. He said the closure is a mutual agreement. Therefore, I urge public and tourists not to climb while work is being carried out. The public must respect it. Letters of appeal have already been distributed. The work committee on the ceremonies has informed guides to postpone climbing if there are tourists who want to climb Mount Agung. He asked the guide to help guard the climbing route to the top of the mountain so the people don't sneak in. If there are tourists climbing, they will be told not to climb to the top. He said, I hope everyone understands the appeal that's been circulated regarding the closure of climbing during the ceremonies. Let's protect the sanctity of Basaki Temple. If there are people or tourists, I guess locals or tourists, who dare to climb secretly and something happens, they must be ready to take full responsibility, responsibility for the consequences according to the applicable regulations. Pak Banku said, let's work together to make everything a success. And some more on payments. Foreign tourists must pay retribution before arriving in Nusa Penida. The Kung Kung Regency government will tighten the collection of fees for tor foreign tourists traveling to Nusa Penida. The reason is that these levies are considered to pro be prone to leaks. Now they're going to be required to pay, the tourists are, before they arrive in Nusa Penida. Okay, what are leaks? Money disappearing, right? 
not, not getting where it's supposed to go. Tourist levy counters for Nusa Penida and Nusa Lombongan will be moved. Locations will be moved to all entrances to Nusa Penida Island, such as Sanur Harbor, Sarangan Harbor, Parangbai Harbor, and Kusamba Harbor. The acting region of Kung Kung said that moving the location for collecting foreign tourist money to Nusa Penida is currently being discussed at the tourism office. The transfer of fees is being carried out to increase the amount of money that they're actually getting. He said, we've been repeatedly protested by the public. Tourists queuing up during the levy process, tourists in the heat, and one more thing, we want more money. We want to eliminate the leaks. The leak in question, he said, is that many tourists were not paying. This is because many tourists landing in different locations in Nusa Penita cannot be controlled by collection officers. By collecting it directly at the departure points, he said, the leak will definitely be resolved. We will collect money from everyone who goes on holiday to Nusa Penida. The head of the Kung Kung Tourism Department said the transfer of levy system would be implemented immediately. The Kung Kung Tourism Office is conducting an assessment with counter staff at all entrances. The process is currently underway with the boat operators. Later, when this cooperation has been signed, the levies can be implemented. Hopefully, it can be accelerated. We will inform you later. So, he said they're going to start right away. But, well, no. First, we're going to do some more studying. Uh, that's not usual. So, when it's said here that things are going to be happening immediately, that means sometime in the future. Or never at all. He said everyone who wants to go to Nusa Penita, both foreign and domestic tourists, will be given a ticket. Those who want to pray will not be given a ticket. They don't have to pay. However, if those who claim that they have a spiritual goal of going to Nusa Penita and they're found a tourism attraction, but they can't show a ticket, they're going to have to pay there. He said we will prepare collection officers at the tourist attractions. Visits are currently very high. In January, 71,000 visits, and in February, 73,000. And the domestic and foreign tourists pay an entrance fee of 25,000 per adult and 15,000 for children. Okay, that is it for today. I hope wherever you are, you're having a lovely time. If you're in Bali, well, I hope the weather is allowing you to do what you want to do. If you're not here, but you're planning on coming here, who knows? The visa-free visits may actually happen sometime because, well, a lot of stuff that is done here is based on what other countries are doing. What is Thailand doing? What is Vietnam doing? What's Malaysia doing? What's Singapore doing? Um, it's a reaction uh, process that happens here. And so we'll see what happens. And so thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe and see you next time. <laughs>